Today, we channel our inner kindergartner and have fun with paint. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to SDG and welcome back to the shop. Haven't been over here for a while. Been doing some soft plastics, been doing some stuff at the vise, but I have gotten a number of requests over the life of this channel to do a dedicated video on painting jig heads, and I've never done that. You guys have seen me paint jig heads when we do the bear hook to complete build and some other times, but never really a focused video on my process for painting jig heads, some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up that maybe I didn't cover in the Wednesday in the workshop playlist. Um, if you haven't watched that playlist, did that about a year ago now, there's 12 different videos of different tips and tricks in the shop. And I hit some of that there, but have never done like a dedicated video for that, for this rather. So that's what we're gonna do today. I have got eight different solid colors and I've got a mixture, three different um, two-tone jig heads that we're gonna do today. So lots of painting. So all of these paints will be down uh, with links in the description as usual. Um, we also have a code now that's a lot easier to use if you want to help out the channel. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help me uh, get more material and stuff like that for making videos. So Barlow's was able to change the code to instead of like AF80 blah, 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 that was hard to remember, just SDG Custom, no spaces. So when you put that in at checkout, then I get a tiny little cut of that profit. And uh, you guys don't have to pay any extra, but it helps me continue to make videos. That's where I keep all my paints, right? Me and my OCD. So I'm gonna pull those down. It's better than um, showing you the paints in these guys. So this is where, ooh, this is where I usually keep them. All of my um, two inch, those are two inch PVC cups. They're interchangeable, so I can use them on my, um, my four stall fluid bed, right? Just pop them on and off. But that's where I usually keep them. The names are on the top, but I figured, hey, why not show you the actual container? So without further ado, let me get those down and I'll show you the colors that we're going to paint up today. So I got them down and while I was doing so, I thought, you know what? Why not just show you everything I got? A bunch of them you guys have seen on the channel before, so nothing new. And they're pretty basic colors because they're, if nothing else, they're a building block as you two-tone jigs or, you know, makes uh, creative stuff. Classic brown, black, of course. This one's cool. Red bug, we've seen that one on the channel a couple of times. Uh, watermelon, red flake, that is silver mine. Disco blue, excited to unveil this one. Mango magic. I also got plum, you know, of all the colors that I don't own until now. Um, it's kind of crazy, but hey, how about green pumpkin? Uh, June bug, you guys have seen this one on the channel a couple times. Maybe the most excited about this one, I don't know, but magic craw blue. But this is black with blue flake. Uh, we are gonna shoot this one today. I don't have the container anymore because it's all in here, but this is smoke. One of my personal favorites, root beer. I should have mentioned this one at the very beginning because it's kind of part of those base colors, but black, brown, I guess green pumpkin. But this is white or white pearl. Um, I do, I have used both. White pearl doesn't take to a plain jig head as well. So if you want to use white pearl, it's best to use plain white as a base coat and then dip it again in white pearl to get that pearlized sheen. Um, if you just go straight to white pearl and you try to dip the, the head in there, you're gonna have to dip it at least twice, if not three plus times. It just doesn't cover and you can always see some of that jig head through and it looks cruddy. So you keep putting more and more and more on and then you put it into cure and you get this nasty drip, this dimple on the bottom of it or it's just running down the jig uh, hook if you use a rack. So definitely have to have white in your powder painting arsenal. So when there's stuff like pearlized paints or uh, there's some others out there as well, you can dip it in white first, get a nice base coat and then add your other colors to it. And I got here gold mine and I got 
copper mine. These two we will use today in those three um, two-tone jig heads that I mentioned. So this is gonna be the accent color on two of those. So as we get ready to paint, I wanted to show you the jig heads themselves uh, so you could see up close and personal what it is that we're going to be painting today. There are some nuances that I wanna call out about these that will affect how I paint these jig heads versus maybe somebody else, I don't know. So this is the half ounce Archie head, Trocar Archie head with a five aught hook. Uh, you can see nice big hook eye, and that will be important here in a minute. The other one was that half ounce um, football head, stand up football head, but using a three aught hook. Actually uses the same, uh, I think it's 32786 Mustad jig hook as the trocar that I just showed you. This is just a three aught version. You can see now where that hook eye is. That presents some challenges based on how I paint jig heads. See these guys right here? These are my little trays. These are my pre-cut shrink wrap tubing. So that's what I put on the eye. Again, those are the scene Wednesday in the workshop. I did a whole video on this, how to keep paint out of the jig eye. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. You can dip the whole thing and then run something hot through it to melt it through, or you can afterwards, you can drill it out. You know, I've done virtually all of those things as opposed to trying to get the paint taken care of after the fact with a drill or something like that. If you do that, in my opinion, uh, you drill it through, what you create are sharp edges on that paint. So then when you tie your, your line to it, you're creating a sharp edge and you're more prone to break off. If you keep the paint out of the eye the entire time, or as best as possible anyway, then what you've got, you've retained that smooth inside edge in the, in the uh, hook eye itself, and it allows you to have more confidence that you're not gonna break off on sharp edges. So what is this heat shrink tubing? Well, I've got two of them right here. These will be linked down in the description. If you're curious, you wanna pick up some on your own. Um, this is more than I will ever need in my existence. I mean, it's got a ton of it. You use this teeny tiny little bit, uh, and it was like eight bucks. Each, I think each was like eight bucks on Amazon. This is one eighth inch or three millimeter. This is what I use for size three aught hooks and larger. And then the little brother is three thirty seconds. So this is what I would use for crappie jigs and anything under say a three aught. So this guy, you can see that recessed line, that recessed hook eye, that presents some problems when it comes to using the uh, heat shrink tubing because there's not enough of this eye for the tubing to grab a hold of and stay. I have used the tubing on this and just kind of push it down on there. Um, it, it works somewhat, but it, it really doesn't. So this is the only exception to the rule. I'll use that heat shrink tubing every chance that I get with every jig head that I make, except for those that have this recessed hook eye. I go ahead and take my chances, dip it down in, bring it out, and then I'll let it cool a bit. And then I take a round, just a little round finesse file. I bought this in a little five pack at uh, Lowe's and very carefully just with the, the pointy end of the tip, right? Nice and pointy end. Just very carefully pushing, putting pressure up against the eye, and I'll just clean that out. I'll push this through, clean it out on both sides, and try to get as much of that paint out of the top of that jig eye, or that hook eye rather, because that's where the line tie goes, right? You want your line tie right there. So the smoothest spot on this hook eye that you want is right where your line tie is going to go, so you don't have any sharp edges. Let's geek out a little bit just for a minute on why I use a heat gun versus a torch or a butane, a little Bunsen burner kind of thing. I don't know how much validity there is in this theory because I think it is a theory, but here's how it goes. When I put a jig head in front of my heat gun, it's really hot, granted, but when I put it in front of that heat gun, it takes 
anywhere depending on the size of the jig, right? If I'm doing a little freestyle 1 8 ounce, it only takes, I don't know, three, four seconds max for that, for that jig head to be screaming hot and ready to be dipped. Um, but for a half ounce, I'm usually looking at eight to 10 seconds at least, because there's a lot of lead here. I would never hold this in front of a torch, like a, a flamethrower, flamethrower, you know what I mean, a little blowtorch, um, for 10 seconds, because it's going to melt this lead. There's so much intense direct heat right in that spot. The flame is so hot as compared to a heat gun that I can't, you can't do that. I believe when you put it in front of a heat gun and because you heat this head slowly, you heat the head more thoroughly throughout. If I use a, a torch and heat this guy up, all of that heat, because it's so hot and so fast, is gonna be surface level. So when I drop it down into a fluid bed with all of that air circulating, I think it cools it off too fast. And I think that presents problems when you pull it out. Uh, you get glooping, you get uneven coverage, you might get um, too much in some places, not enough in others because the head cooled down too fast. As opposed to a heat gun that may take a little bit longer to heat up, the heat remains longer for when you go down into that fluid bed and allows you to swish it around just a minute in the fluid bed, pull it out and have a nice even coat. Continuing on with our uh, brief little nerd out here, hopefully you're still with me. So I have found that as I dip this jig head, especially anything with a flat back, see how flat that is? It's a stand up jig head. So flat back or even with this, I mean, there's a flat ish surface there, especially where the sprue was, right? Um, I have found that if I dip this in, so I'm going to hold on to it with some pliers. Actually, I use locking. Well, hold on a second. There they go. The little trout pliers, right? They, they lock so I can grab a hold of this guy, lock it in place, and then just be able to function and use it without having to keep pressure on um, the pliers to hold on to it. When I dip this guy down in, and this flat piece is angled down, which would make sense, what I have found um, is if I just dip it down and pick it up, right? Going into a fluid bed, you're only in there for a second, if that. What I find is that this flat bottom, probably because the, the, the fluid bed and, and all of that movement is, is coming over the top. Granted, you're, you're pushing down, right? So the, the flat part is being pushed down into the fluid bed, but as you pull it up, the top part is gonna collect more, um, more powder paint, paint than the bottom. So I have found that I get all kinds of dimpling and missing paint on the back, um, which means I gotta I got do one of a couple of things. I can either re-dip the whole thing, or I'll just dip just the bottom, right? And try to get that bottom piece cleaned up. So what I have found is the best way to dip any jig head that I have is to actually dip it not only down in, but as it's in there, swish it back and forth. So the movement's pretty quick. It's just down, move out and up. Down, swish it back out, back and forth and up. And what that does is as it's moving back and forth, you're getting that surface area across those flat pieces and really just everywhere else. Um, and I found that that dip move up technique has yielded far better coverage really on the jig head as a whole to the point where some stuff that I always dip twice, I only have to dip once to get the same results, which is it is now finally time to actually paint this stuff. So what I'm going to do, what I thought would be helpful, I'm going to uh, walk you through one Arky head and one football head real time. So you're going to hear the heat gun, all that noise. Um, I'll put the, the heat shrink on. Uh, if there's anything that I have to mention that I forgot about thus far, then I'll try to mention it then. You'll see me dip it and you'll see the results. Um, we'll probably do that with the first one, Mango Magic.
from there, I'll set the, uh, the rest of them to music, speed it up a little bit, but make sure that I show you the results. And, uh, and then we'll do those two tones. I am excited about the two tones because we're gonna get some of that stuff on top in various ways so you can see how to do that as well. Let's get to painting. Ha! Well, shame on me. How can we talk about painting jig heads and not, I don't know, maybe show you the fluid bed, four stall fluid bed that I made and use? Yeah, it was uh, an oversight on my part. My apologies. So this is the four stall. There is a whole video on this. It's one of my most watched videos on the channel, in fact, how I made it. Um, so you can go back and find that if you like and see how you made or see how I made it and make one of your own. Uh, having a conversation with a buddy just today, actually, uh, we talked about why are these couplings here? And admittedly, I think I was thinking the design was going to be different at the time and they're not necessary. So just FYI, if you do decide to make one of your own, this one is not necessary. You can go straight from the bottom, no coupler, and uh, just have that space there. It's designed so that these cups pop off and the um, paint is inside. I use brown paper bags as the filter. Now there's a lot of different options for filters. I went through basically all of them and none of them worked well for me except for brown paper bags. So that is what I use. This is a manifold that regulates the air. So the air comes in from the side here from the pump in the back, which I'll mention in a second. And, but it, it fills this chamber and it both cleans up the design, but it also allows uh, for a more regulated, even flow of air. So definitely a thumbs up on that one. Critical that each of your cups have their own valve because some of the paints are heavier than others and require more air to push them up and get them rolling. Some are really light, so you want to be able to customize the airflow to each of the different cups. If you're going to look for a pump, uh, I highly recommend one with a, an adjustable variable um, airflow. I use this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, once I get it going, I'll, make, I'll sure, make, make sure that each of these um, valves is open to an appropriate level. But if I'm changing cups, I can, I can back off the, um, the flow here and it kind of reduces the other three so I can get a new one on and then adjust that one, then bring the whole thing back up. Uh, it's just been really, really useful. If I only use one cup for some reason, I'll, I'll even just set this at a reasonable level and control the flow instead of here, because you can't, I mean, these get close, but you can't really dial in this kind of valve. This guy is adjustable, far more adjustable to fine tune and tweak it. I think this is a 60 to 100 gallon uh, pump. So I'll do my best to find one on Amazon or somewhere else and include this link down in the uh, description for you as well. All right, so let's get this thing rolling. Uh, a couple of things to note prior to um, putting any air through it, I like to get a little paper clip or something with a, with a rounded bottom, right? Something that's not gonna pierce through that paper and go into each one and just give it a little stir because the paint will definitely settle and you don't want it to settle. You need that air to move freely through the paint in order for it to um, work properly. Otherwise, I mean, it'll eventually work, right? But you might get a, a billow of air that pushes that whole kind of compacted mass forward until it, at, at some point the air explodes through and then you've got um, powder paint just everywhere and it's a real, real disaster. So. Mix them up prior to uh, putting any air in the pump. Once that's done, I wanna make sure that my adjustment is all the way down, so I got the at least amount as possible. Go ahead and plug this guy in. I can hear the pump is on. I'm gonna go ahead and crank each one of these just a quarter turn, somewhere like that. All right? And then we'll go ahead and start bringing this guy up, dialing it up. Now, I'm going to grab whatever you want. I use the same thing, uh, the same pliers that I mentioned before. And as I go, the caps are still on because I don't want it to go everywhere. 
I'll just give it a little tap on the side. And that just kind of gets, gets it moving. All right, take a look, see how each is going. So oftentimes as I whack it and I'm watching, it'll, it'll grow as I whack it. Just like that. I got some more that I can get from the main pump. I eventually want this to be at full blast, if at all possible, but I don't want to make a mess, right? So that looks pretty good. That looks good. This looks good. Oh, these all look really good. Go ahead and carefully remove each one of these and I can tweak back it down individually now, just so I don't get a lot of paint splattering off the edges. Um, you'll know that it's not working right if you get what are called volcanoes. So, and volcanoes most often happen on the edges where the filter's wrong or something's off and the air can't get through evenly, your, you can't get through your filter evenly, so it finds a weak point, pops through, and you get these volcanoes on the edge and it just makes a holy mess. Get a close-up shot. See that? They're kind of boiling. Looks like um, boiling water, right? That green pumpkin is a little bit more full than I typically like my cups to be, but it'll work. All right, I know you can't see my head, but we're gonna walk through one of these processes from start to finish, as I mentioned. Got the Arky head here. I already pulled out a piece of um, heat shrink. So I'm gonna put these, this Arky head in my pliers. I like to use the flat part of the, the hook. If you, if you keep it here, then it wants to kind of turn on you, right? So if you put it down here and lock it in, tends to, I, I have a little bit more control of it. Put it on the heat for 10 to 12 seconds. Um, then I'll put the shrink wrap on, and then we're gonna go into our Mango Magic, um, swish around just for a second. Of course, this one has a weed guard, as do both. I haven't mentioned that, but another one of my little cups here. These are um, Teflon weed guard pins. The, the, um, the paint doesn't stick to them uh, permanently. You can just kind of scratch it off with your thumbnail after the fact. So definitely pick those up. I think they're sold in 10 packs. All right, heat gun is on. I can see that it's hot enough because the inside is glowing. Let's go ahead and paint this guy. Rotate it slowly all the way around. Make sure the collar gets hit, the top gets hit. I usually count while I do this, but I'm talking, so I'm hoping that that is about right. Here's a heat shrink, so carefully because the head is hot. I'm going to put that over that eye. See how it's shrinking down? Oh, see how it's shrinking down already? I just hit it again with the heat, shrink it the rest of the way. Beautiful. There we go. See that? Get another little hit here since I'm moving around. Now let's get our um, Teflon in there. And down we go. In, swish, bring it up, and clunk it off. And there it is. Good coverage. Turned out nice. Now normally, I want to get this um, pin out as soon as possible so that it doesn't build up um, paint around the, um, the weed guard hole. So I just give it, you guys see that? So I just give it a little spin, a little twist, and pops right out. Nice, clean weed guard hole. And then that shrink tubing will stay on there um, until I'm done with them all. Then I'll pop it off for curing. So let's do the um, football head next. We're gonna do this one a little bit different. As I mentioned, there's gonna be no heat shrink on the top. We will put the pin in um, to protect the weed guard hole just like before. But what I wanna do with this one is actually dip it twice. Not because I need it to, need to, but I wanna show you the difference in the color 
typically when you dip something twice, it's gonna get a little uh, darker, a little richer color. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's probably good. Same pin. Down swish, plump it off. Down swish, plump it off. So you can see the difference. It is a thicker coating, a deeper, richer color. So let me get this wheat guard pin out and I'll show you both of them kind of up close. There you go. So there's a slight difference that you can kind of tell there. See how the Archie head is just a little lighter and that football head just has a, a deeper green to it. I think the flake shows up a little bit better either one will fish you know i i tend to like uh, more opaque colors anyway in what i fish and what i make um so i tend to lean towards this guy than this guy but either one and the amount of paint on either one even even though like i said it's dipped twice it's not so thick that it's going to cause problems later on all right, guys, so that is that on the step-by-step -step tutorial. So I'm going to hit the rest of these, and I'll probably put a little label on the bottom so that you can see what colors are what as I do them. But uh, let's paint the rest of these and speed it up. So this is a fail. Holy cow. I don't, this is a new paint for me. I don't know what just happened here. Green pumpkin may be one of those that is just too thick and I gotta get in and out really quick because that, holy cow, that is no bueno. switch out the cups. I've done all four of these. I'm actually going to go, instead of to the valves themselves, I'm going to go to this master and crank it all the way down. So put the tops back on these guys. And then the beauty of this fluid bed um, unit is they just pop off and put the new ones on. Make sure that as you put the new ones on, you hold down the, the cup because that air that's that's in here is going to push up against the the uh, filter and we'll pop this whole thing and it'll go everywhere so just take your time keep the lid push down on it so our next run is going to be magic craw blue black with blue flake root beer and smoke <laughs> Look at that, Magic Craw Blue, that's fantastic. So you saw me just dip that one straight down, pull it back up. This is what I'm talking about. See those little dimples, missing dimples? That's why when I put it down in, I move it around just a little bit to avoid that. See if we can get rid of it. A little more heat, not a lot. And just lightly, just the bottom. A little more heat. And there we go. Still not perfect, but all covered.
all of these single coats are complete. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Now we're gonna real quick just make three two-tone jigs. And we're gonna do that with the fluid bed, just like before. I've got Mango Magic here, I've got Plum, and I've got that uh, squirrely green pumpkin that kind of gave me some issues there. Still don't know what that was about. But um, we're gonna use those as our base coats. And then I've got three pieces of paper that you'll see, one for each of the top coat colors, since we don't wanna mix those and whatever doesn't fall on the jig and falls on the paper, you can just you know pour back in and you don't have as much waste. So with the mango, if you guys saw, there's little flecks of gold throughout that mango magic. So we're going to top coat that guy with gold mine. Gold mine is a little bit thicker, just like silver mine, copper mine, gold mine. They're a little bit thicker. And I have found, especially when using silver mine, that it's a lot easier to use my fingers um, to grab some and control it because the, the particles are so much thicker. Uh, same with Disco Blue. All of that stuff that's really shiny, got a lot of flake in it, got a lot of sparkle, best to use your fingers so you can really control um, how that top coat goes on the jig. I thought Plum would be perfect as the jelly in a PB&J. So we're going to use a um, brush, another piece of paper, with brown, and I'm gonna use just a, a little detail painting brush that you would get to do trim around your house or whatever. It's about an inch wide. Dip it down in the brown and then hold it over the jig and just tap, tap, tap it with my finger and we'll get that top peanut butter coating on that one. And then lastly, we've got green pumpkin. So green pumpkin, I love the combination of green pumpkin and copper. So we're gonna use the copper mine with green pumpkin. Although, again, it's copper mine, gold mine, silver mine. Usually I'm using my fingers to control it I do wanna do that one though with the brush just to kind of give you the different flavor of what that looks like. Since you guys already saw me dip all of these colors in a single coat, which in this case would act as our base coat, not gonna film that, but I will zoom in over on the paper so that you guys can see how we put that top coat on. Well, that's it guys. The only thing left to do now is to take the shrink wrap tubing off of the hook eye because as I mentioned, you do not want to cure these things in the oven with that stuff on the hook eye. It makes for a really nasty, sticky, awful mess. And then we're gonna cure these things in my oven. Uh, I set my oven at 300, even though I know that my oven at 300 is really closer to 325, 350. If you don't know what I'm talking about, once again, go to Wednesday in the workshop, look for a video that talks about calibrating your toaster oven, because most of those things run a lot different, and most of them run a lot hotter than what the dial says the heat is. So I calibrated mine, found out that 350, which is what this paint calls for to cure, is really 300. So I put it in there at 300 for about 25 minutes, and they are good to go. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, it was cool to use all those new paints. I'm excited to use those in the future as well. As a reminder, 
All those paints will be down um, in the description with links to Barlow's Tackle if you liked any of them and you want to get one of your own. So this is about as in-depth as I can get on painting jig heads. It's a video that I probably should have done a long time ago, but here it is now. I hope you nerded out with me well, hung with me through this one. I know it was a longer one, but uh, hopefully you found a lot of value from it. If you did like it and you'd like to see some more videos like it or lure building videos, then check out this video right here. If you're curious why I call the channel SDG, check out this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Vice.